story time. My last season was with the Baltimore Ravens. And I want you to understand, for whatever reason, my two favorite players are safeties. Um, my first favorite player of all time is Ed Reed. Um, my second favorite player of all time is Brian Dawkins. And Brian Dawkins was one of those players that you could tell transformed. You know, everybody, you know people hear him talk about, you know, his favorite character was Wolverine. You could literally see plays where he tackled people like Wolverine. Like, it's scary. But, but here, catch this. I'm obviously sitting in this locker room and probably, you know, three of the greatest players in NFL history, Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, Terrell Suggs. I think Terrell Suggs is, is one of the greatest players in NFL history. Um, but I'm, I'm over here kicking Ray Lewis, dog, right? Like, it's like we just won a chip a couple years ago, so I definitely had some respect in the locker room in light of, you know, these guys being hungry, Jim Harbaugh, you know, Jim, Jim Harbaugh, I'm not sure if it's his second year, third year, um, and he's the guy that brings me in because of his background as a special teams coach. So I'm going to get back on track here when it comes to this lesson. But this is getting into the identity piece. Now, Ray Lewis is that dude. So I'm in my first team meeting. Ray Lewis, at the end of the team meeting, John Harbaugh just like, excuse me, I, I probably said Jim. John says, yo, Ray, you got anything? And, and that's, that's kind of dope. i never seen that. Tom Coffin wasn't asking nobody what they, <laughs> what, they, what, they, what they got to say. So he tossed it to, to Ray. And, and, and Ray gets up there. He got like the, you know, like the little safari hat on. He, he chilling. And, um, you know, everybody's known that dude will get you hyped, right? Like, he's like, I was talking to the Lord. I said, what's the message? What's the message? And, and God said to me, do you know your name? Now, <laughs> this is my first meeting, like first team meeting. And I'm locked in. This is Ray Lewis. And I know he fears God, right? Like, um, and I, at this point, I'm, I'm radical for Christ. Like, you can forget about us. Do you know your name? Do you know your name? He says, Joe Flacco, do you know your name? Ray Rice, do you know your name? He has a few other people in the room. Jameer McClain, do you know your name? Because if you know your name, you know your name, and I know your name, there's no one that can stop the Ravens. So I'm locked in. I'm like, yo, this dude, yo, this Ray, do, do you know your name? He's like, yeah, because this is a war. This is a this this is not just this isn't this is ain't no game. This is a war. It's a spiritual war against principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. I said, what? What is he talking about? Now, mind you, I'm casing the room at the same time. So I was completely lost and locked in because I'm ready to be taken up in Ray Lewis heaven. And I realized I think Ray a little. Double-minded. I don't know. I just think, I think Ray just went from motivator to preacher in one moment. Like, this is a game, Ray. This is like we're going to strap up these natural pads and we're going to click-clack against the Minnesota Vikings. This is not principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. Like, God is behind the scenes doing things. But, yo, so I realized, man, this dude puts on, like, lying, like puts on. And... So you want to hold those things loosely in relation to like healthy formation. I've been in athlete development in front office eight years and work. And we talk about transition away from the game when that's who you believe you are. That's a dangerous place because who you are is not what you do. Right. So that's one of the also a tremendous lesson from from failures. You have to learn how to separate your identity from what you do. Right. That's take that as a lesson. Right. And light in light of time, um, I think, you know, where I want to be with this episode, you know, you know, the the recap is, you know, we talk about some of our poor decision making mistakes and failures. Understand that they affect other people. There are no vacuum decisions. Right. Um, you know, when it comes to any major decision, especially business decisions, due diligence is of, of utmost important. Back that up with two or three people. And I'm talking about if it's an if it's an if it's a financial, have two people in your circle that you can bounce those ideas off, right? So that you can gain perspective in the multitude of counsel, their safety, right? In the multitude, not in the similitude. So if you only have one voice in your life, and that's where 
athletes, we, we, we find comfort zones and we get in those comfort zones and then we kind of hedged in and there's blind spots. It creates blind spots. It's the same thing as you have in the car, right? When you locked in moving forward, you got your mirrors here, but there's still blind spots. Unless you turn pivot, you're not going to gain access to, to certain, to certain insight and information that's useful in decision-making and you can crash and burn. The, the, the mul in the multitude of counsel, there's, why? Because people have different perspectives, different experiences, and that will provide different insight that will allow you to make some of the best decisions. So in any sphere, if it's an operations question, maybe you're not strong in operations, get somebody that's a little bit more targeted, detailed, structured, organized to help you and give you insight on how to move and navigate that in your business. And it, with building your brand, whatever it is, organizing your preparation as an athlete. We won't leave anybody out. Um, and ultimately, you are not what you do. That's where be well, do well comes from. If you have a, a true sense of being, right, as a son, as a husband, as a father, and your identity is well-mannered and, and the things, that the, the, the things, the person, the being that you are becoming, right, the being that you are becoming then you can adapt in every season and every stage of life. So you, what you do is what gives you purpose, right? What you do, what you tend to is what gives you purpose. But if you don't tend to who you are, if you don't be well, you won't do well.